Hello again everyone from Tokyo Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today I'm going to be doing another instructional video. Uh, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to uh, load and operate the Yashica Flex A twin lens reflex camera. For those of you who are new to my channel I sell vintage Japanese cameras in my online store japanvintagecamera.com. I have an Etsy store which is also called Japan Vintage Camera, so if you'd like to buy a Yashica A <clears throat> or another vintage Japanese camera, uh, please, please visit one of my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So uh, through my stores I often receive messages about the Yashica Flex A or Yashica A. There are two, you know, the, the camera was uh, had a couple of different names during its production run. A lot of people are curious and wanting to know if it's a good camera for uh, beginners to use. And some people have bought the camera <clears throat> and need a little bit of help figuring out how it works. So uh, this video is made in response to these uh, questions or comments. So uh, the Ashika uh, A was produced in the 1950s and it had a fairly long production run. I believe it was the most popular TLR uh, camera made by Yashica. And there were a few different variations made along the way. Uh, the earliest versions were kind of like this one here. You can kind of spot the Yashica uh, A or Yashica Flex A. Uh, first, that it has um, uh, external shutter. That is, the shutter with everything is mounted on the front of the camera instead of being located behind uh, the faceplate of the camera. They tend to have these two smooth chrome rings uh, around the lenses rather than the ones which accept a bayonet uh, mount later on. And they tend to have a very uh, simple uh, focus and focus and winding system on one side, and uh, just a uh, flash shoe and sometimes a flash sync socket on this side. Not all these cameras come with a flash sync socket. All of them come with the same uh, Yashimar 80 millimeter f 3.5 lens. There are some variations in the shutter speed. Some have a maximum speed of one two hundredth of a second. Some go up to one three hundredth of a second. Uh, they have a couple of different film counting systems. This is an early example and it uses a window on the back and, and through this window you can see the numbers on the paper back into the film and this lets you know when you wind from frame to frame. Uh, the later and most common version uh, has a mechanical counter and it has a mechanical counter window here which lets you know which uh, frame you are on. Uh, the cameras came in different colors. Uh, they came in black, and this is a brown paint version, which is a little bit rare, and this one also has the Yashica A on the top instead of the Yashica Flex. Uh, they also came in with a gray painted finish. Uh, the least common is probably the black one, which says Yashica A on the top. That's the one I, I see the least of. Uh, basically, they are uh, pretty much the same camera fundamentally, and one reason that I really like these cameras is that they are very user-friendly and very user-serviceable. Uh, if you know nothing at all about cameras or photography or are not mechanically inclined, if you find one of these old cameras sitting inside a, a thrift store or uh, in someone's attic or something like that, uh, you can usually get it up and running with a little bit of work and not much skill at all. Uh, what I like about these is like on older cameras you could simply unscrew the, the lens here on the shutter and therefore if you get one of these cameras which has been sitting for 30, 40 or 50 years, it probably has dirt or fungus or something on the glass, you can simply unscrew the shutter, uh, uh, cock it, set it to the bulb setting and uh, you can open it up and you can access the glass on the inside and outside and that allows you to easily clean it up. And luckily the glass on these old cameras was quite durable and it didn't suffer much from etching or fungus damage. Uh, if the shutter is sticky on one of these cameras, usually I use my most uh, uh, favorite tool here, the Zippo uh, lighter fluid. A drop or two on the shutter blades and I just uh, cycle the shutter a few times. Uh, blow it with a little like canned air. I buy these on Amazon, you can get them at the dollar store and stuff too. Do that a few times and I'll usually get it going and uh, they get the camera running or the shutter within the ballpark so you can take good photographs with it. When it's clean and the glass of the lenses are elements are all clean, you just simply screw the lens back on like so. 
uh, for myself when I service these cameras. Of course, I do more work than that. I'll remove the shutter and I'll clean the mechanisms and all that stuff more individually. But uh, for just ordinary playing around, um, it's not really necessary to get too deep in one of these cameras. Uh, they're quite easy to work on. Uh, another thing that you should clean before shooting them is the focusing screen, and you can see it here. And the focusing loop, especially the back side. The back side sits on this kind of leather patch uh, inside the hood, and it contacts that. And after it contacts it for a while, it picks up kind of residue from it. And it can be a little hard to clean off, but it will clean off if you're persistent. Uh, for more work, like cleaning the inside or the back of the uh, taking lens, you need to remove the focusing hood and stuff. And I show how to do that in my uh, video on how to resurrect a twin lens reflex camera. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, show you how to load film in the Ashika A. And how this works depends on which version you have. As I said, and as you can see, there are two versions. One has a film counter window on the back and one does not. So there's a little bit of difference in how you uh, work these. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the one with the film counter because this is the most common version. And if you find one or buy one somewhere, this is most likely what you're going to get. Perhaps nine out of 10 uh, Yashica A's have this uh, mechanical film counter system. So the first thing you need to do to load the film is you, of course, you need a roll of film. Uh, this is 120 roll film. Uh, you know, it's quite easy to find. This 120 roll film has been around for a long time. Uh, it was in in wide use before 35 millimeter film was available. And a lot of people believe it may continue to be used after 35 millimeter film is discontinued. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but uh, uh, it's been around for a long time and basically unchanged. And the way it works is you have a paper backing on the outside which protects the film on the inside. Now the paper backing blocks any light from the backside and it also is, gives you a kind of guide uh, when it comes to loading the film and rolling the, uh, and, and uh, rolling and I guess winding the film. So I'll go ahead and uh, uh, go ahead and get started showing you how that works. So the first thing we need to do when we uh, load the film in the camera is to open the back and you just turn this lever to the side and lift open this foot and the door opens like so. The next thing you need to do is make sure that you have a take-up spool. Now usually these cameras will have a take-up spool because uh, uh, whoever used the camera last uh, probably took out the film but left the empty spool. Uh, you may find a take-up spool where it's supposed to be, up here by the winding dial, or you may find it on the opposite side here. Someone uh, used all the film and left an empty spool here. When you get a new roll of film, it comes with a spool, and when you wind through all the film, all the film goes onto the uh, take-up spool and leaves the film spool in the camera. And when you go ahead and load a new roll of film, you take this empty spool, move to the take-up position, and move your uh, uh, empty roll here. Uh, sometimes you might find one of these cameras that doesn't have a spool. Uh, you can usually find these at a camera shop somewhere. Uh, they may not develop the film anymore, but likely they have at least a couple of these laying around somewhere. Uh, when I sell cameras, I always make sure to include a take-up spool so people can use them right away. Looking in the back here, we have a couple of pointers. Uh, these are where my fingers are pointing. Maybe you can see they're red colored. Uh, that's a guide for starting the film. And I'll show you right now how that works. So when you load the film on Yashica TLR, you have to pull out uh, this knob and turn it a little bit so it stays propped in the upright position. Uh, you take your roll of film and kind of opening it this way. So uh, the film leader is on the bottom and this hole on the right fits in the dowel on the inside of the uh, film chamber. And then I turn this knob until it pops back in again. And I'll make sure that it's seated all the way inside. That way I know that it's engaging the uh, film on both ends and that it will unroll properly. The next thing you do is you slowly pull out the paper leader on the back. And you'll notice that it has kind of a triangular shape on the back. And this pointy part here is supposed to be fed into the take-up spool. So I'll go ahead and turn this dial so the slot on the take-up spool is facing upward. Then I'll go ahead and stick the end of the leader into the slot on the take-up spool and make sure it's pretty deep in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and wind slowly. And what I do when I wind is I push 
uh, the paper backing with my finger as you can see and I keep holding it still. I do that because I don't want the paper leader to pop out of the take-up spool. That, uh, that causes a lot of problems if that happens. If you've closed the door and you've started winding and you're trying to get to the next frame or in this case you know the uh, it may just start counting the film even though the film isn't moving. So I'll keep doing this and after it's wound around once or twice uh, then you don't have to worry about it. It'll go the rest of the way. So next I want to keep winding this and I'm going to be looking for the start mark which is this white line here with arrows on the end. And I keep winding that around and around and around until it lines up with my red marks. So when it's lined up with the red marks then it's time to uh, close the camera and reset the counter. If you look here we have some white lines here and these are used with other formats. Since the uh, frame counter window for 6x6 is in the middle, if you're using the camera with the window you can see this line moving through the window. If you're using 6x4 or 5 it'll be over on this side and I believe this one over here is a 6x9. So. I go ahead and close the door and latch it and make sure that it's shut and it's not going to pop open. The next thing I have to do is uh, reset the film counter and I, I might have mentioned earlier that you reset the film counter by pushing this button on the middle of the film winding dial and then pull down on this little lever here, kind of downward and toward the back. And uh, the dial in this window will change to the red S and when it's in that position it's time to wind the film and you simply wind and wind and wind and you can see uh, the film counter dial moving and you keep winding and it'll stop and when it stops and you look through the window you should see the number one Let me go ahead and focus here a little bit the number one will show and that means that the first frame is ready to go so and now that uh, the uh, film is ready, uh, you need to prepare to use the camera. So what you need to do is you need to make the appropriate settings for the available light. Uh, uh, there are three ways you can do this. The first way is using a light meter app. The second way is with a handheld light meter. And third is with an exposure card, which is just simply a, a card with, which lists a number of different lighting conditions. And then below each condition, it recommends a certain uh, light value or aperture and shutter speed combination. Uh, for the light meter app you simply program the film speed you were using and you point the camera in your uh, smartphone at what you want to take a photograph of and the app will show you the best uh, aperture and uh, shutter speed combination. Uh, if you are shooting with a handheld light meter it's basically the same except that it's not electronic. On the handheld light meter you input the film speed and you uh, point the meter at the light or you have the light which is going to light up your subject uh, strike the meter and then you look at the readings on the meter and you ch put those into your camera. So uh, uh, if I were shooting say 400 speed film indoors and uh, I have say a 100 watt light bulb over my head in the room it's not quite that bright in here but I'll just assume that the best setting that I could uh, do with this camera or what setting which would work would be say uh, 1 50th of a second at uh, f3.5. That's that's in the ballpark and it will get a, a uh, it will catch an image uh, at that you know, at that setting. Uh, depending on what I want to do, if I want to get more depth of field I'll choose a smaller aperture and a longer shutter speed. If I want less depth of field I'll choose a wider aperture and a faster shutter speed. But once I've selected my uh, shutter speed and aperture, uh, then I need to uh, get ready to take a photo. So I have to pop open uh, the hood, viewing hood. I'll push open here on this uh, door here to pop open the focusing loop. And then I will go ahead and focus on what I want to take a photograph of. And uh, it's a little bit tricky with the TLR because things are uh, reversed. Uh, through here. It doesn't have the pentaprism system that an SLR camera has so uh, things are a little bit backwards. So when you're, for example, the computer monitor is behind my camera right now and if I look through the hood the writing on the monitor is backwards. It makes it a little bit tricky at first on which way to point the camera 
And also a thing that's a little bit hard to get used to is keeping the image vertical. Uh, it, it's very easy to tilt the camera a little bit one way or another, and this kind of makes a, a big funny looking difference uh, on the focusing screen when you're trying to take an uh, image or take a photograph. So uh, once you have your uh, subject in focus and you have carefully uh, composed, you would charge a shutter. You would probably should charge a shutter beforehand, but on the other hand, charging the shutter too soon makes it more likely to accidentally discharge the shutter. And that's a little easier on these cameras than some others. So you've focused, you've composed, and you simply shoot like so. And once you've uh, taken your photograph, you have to push this button to unlock the winding knob, and then you turn it until uh, the number two shows in the film counter dial. And that's all there is to it. Uh, if you are using one of these cameras for the first time, I would recommend going out and uh, making a couple of dry runs with it. That is, uh, take out the camera and try to get used to uh, focusing uh, through the uh, TLR hood and kind of the backwards uh, focusing glass. At least it's not like large format where not only is it backwards, but it's upside down. On the TLR, everything is upright, but uh, just left is right and right is left. So uh, you, you need to get a little bit of practice with that to be comfortable with it. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take the film out of the camera. And once you've gone to the end of the film, when you reach number 12 and you release on this camera, when you start turning, it won't stop anymore. You just keep turning and turning and turning, and eventually all the film and the backing paper will end up on the take-up spool. So I don't want to go through all that. What I want to do is I want to reuse this uh, same film in my other camera with the uh, counter window on the back. So I'll go ahead and remove it. I'll just pop out these like so. <clears throat> and wind this back here. And as I'm winding, you can see a whole bunch of lines and dots on the back of the film. Uh, I'll go ahead and briefly explain what these are, and I'll show you a little bit more information about them once uh, uh, I've got the uh, film or this paper loaded in the camera. So we started at this arrow here, and after the arrow, uh, the film moves up to these lines here. And these are guidelines uh, showing uh, which one to look at in the different formats. And as I said, 6x4, 5, 6x6, and 6x9. As you move along here, uh, we reach the part here where the uh, arrows are, and this is where the film starts uh, in the camera. So the film is attached. You can see it's taped on the back here, and uh, when we reach this point here, the film is starting to go over the open uh, film area. And then we have these dots here, and these dots are to warn you that the next frame is coming up. So uh, when you see these dots starting to show up in the uh, window on the back of the camera, that means you're getting close to the next image, so you should slow down and wind more carefully. And then when you get to the frame itself, when it's wound up, you'll see the number uh, through the window. And the systems vary from camera to camera. Uh, they have, or film to film, I should say. They may have different designs, but they all follow the same basic idea. So let's go ahead and put this in my other Yashica Flex uh, A camera and show you how it works. So I'll go ahead and set this one aside and I'll take this one. The door opens exactly the same way. This one already has the take up spool installed. I'll go ahead and pull out the knob here and lock it into place. I'll put in the film the same way I put it in the last camera. Okay, nice click. That means it's where it's supposed to be. Go ahead and pull the film meter around like so and feed it into the slot. I'll go ahead and hold on to the film meter as I wind the backing paper. Uh, look at the bottom of the paper backing, watching for the start line to come up. This camera has the start points in the exact same spot as the last Yashica Flex, except that these aren't painted red, uh, so you have to look a little bit more carefully. In some cameras they'll be painted white, and sometimes they'll be arrows, sometimes they'll be dots, but basically you know, it's all the same idea. 
So once that is lined up, I'll go ahead and close the back here and I'll open this window. And uh, with the window open, I'll go ahead and I'll start uh, winding the film. Excuse me, I have to use the, not focus the camera, but wind the film. And as I wind, I can kind of see the white line being pulled through. And the white line has breaks in it from uh, time to time. And when you see the breaks come, you know that the, the, wheel, the film is winding and it's not stuck and that you didn't make a mistake loading it. Okay, keep going. There's a long period here where it's just black. And then we have this little arrow pointing downward and that means it's getting ready to, uh, the film is coming back in and it's ready to get to the counter. See the big dot, the not so big dot, the medium dot, the small dot, and then the number one shows up and I put it exactly in the middle of the window here and the camera is wound uh, to the first frame. I'll go ahead and close the door and I'll go ahead and make my settings to the camera. So let's say indoors again. So f3.5 at uh, 1 60th of a second or 1 50th of a second in these cameras. Uh, it depends on which version you have. Some of them have like the old Leica style, uh, 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 10, 25, 50, 100. Later ones have uh, 20, 30, 60, 120. Cock the shutter the same way. Oh. Cock the shutter. Open the focusing hood, pop out the loop, uh, carefully compose, focus, and shoot. And that's all there is to it. So uh, what do I do next is I simply wind to the next frame. Once again, it shows the dots, warning dots, bigger, not so big, medium, small, tiny, and then we're to number two and the camera is ready to make the second exposure. And once you get to the second exposure, you just uh, take the photo and you just go oh, so on and so on and so on and so on. I'll go ahead and wind this uh, uh, camera to the end and show you what happens. Being this is a six by six camera, you'll get 12 exposures on a 120 roll of film. Uh, other cameras will shoot different formats. For example, uh, I have a Yashica Flex or Yashica Rookie here, which shoots in either 6x6 or 6x45. And so you would use, depending on which format you're using, you would use uh, whichever window recommend where it goes along with it. But with 6x45, you'll get more exposures. I believe 16 exposures instead of 12. So I've wound the film all the way to the end, and as you can see, uh, it's here hanging over the end here and uh, the original film spool is now in the bottom. I'll go ahead and pop this out like so. Usually when you reach the end of the film it'll say like here it says exposed or maybe my, my G7X is not focusing as well as I would like which is it never focuses as well as I would like. But anyway uh, there's also usually a piece of tape attached here and you can use this to roll over the end of this leader and that will prevent the film spool from unraveling accidentally and exposing your film. And when you're getting ready to shoot the camera again, of course, pop out the film spool, put it on the take up side, put in your new film, and the camera is ready to go. Anyway, uh, it's kind of a long video, but I hope it helps those people who had questions about the Ashka Flex A. I plan to do a couple of similar videos about the Rookie TLR cameras. If you'd like to see those, uh, please stay tuned. I have a lot of TLR ca cameras listed in my stores right now, uh, more than usual. So if you're looking for one, uh, please check it out. Maybe you'll see one which you like. I'll be listing a lot more cameras later on during this week and hopefully making a few more videos as well. So uh, if you have a chance, please visit my stores. And also, if you want to see more camera videos, uh, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.